there was a, a really a big move. We kept saying, Chicago, move out. If you like Justin Fields and there's no Andrew Luck or Trevor Lawrence, uh, get out of the number one spot. You need a lot of good players. So the Bears went out and made a big move with Carolina on Friday. They got a first-round pick. They got a couple of seconds. And they got a star receiver, D.J. Moore, who's been wildly productive with Kyle Allen, Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, really good player. So I've never had a ton of confidence in the Bears ownership or the Bears front office in my entire life. You can't even – they've never had a great wide receiver. I mean, who's their best quarterback ever? They feel like now they're too defensive-led, even though their defense stinks right now. The culture's always been about defense. The NFL's moving to offense. But I thought this was a home run. I thought this was about as good as you could do. Listen, the Bears need a bunch of players. And they only moved down eight spots. And NFL general managers will tell you privately or publicly, the first round usually has somewhere between, you know, 16 to 18 really elite players. After that, a lot of teams would rather move out of the first round. You got to pay a first round price for a second round guy. Not a big difference between the 20th player in the first round and, you know, the 50th player in the second round. There's usually 15 to 18, somewhere around there, really elite players, and the Bears still get one of those picks. And then they got more draft capital. So, and DJ Moore, again, um, this is a draft where the top quarterback prospect is historically small and historically light, which is, of course, historically um, trouble. And yet they got all this. And since the trading deadline last year, they have completely rebuilt their wide receiving core. Chase Claypool, DJ Moore, Darnell Mooney, and tight end Cole Komet, no more excuses. That's what this was. No more excuses for Justin Fields. Anytime you get one of these quarterbacks that gets criticized, a Daniel Jones or a Justin Fields, it is always, well, he doesn't have this, and he doesn't have that. Forget the fact that Justin Herbert had the league's worst offensive line as a rookie and lit the league up. Forget the fact that Joe Burrow had an atrocious offensive line and was a play from winning and playing you know, it, it, going to overtime or winning the Super Bowl. Justin Fields to this point is athletic. He's a highlight player, but doesn't complete enough passes. So everybody blames the offensive line, which was not as bad as the Giants. It was middle of the pack, according to PFF. And everybody blames the wide receiving core, which was better than the Giants. Uh, but now it's a grown-up wide receiving tight end core. They could add to it in the draft, but they don't necessarily have to. You got three guys who are really nice NFL wide receivers, an ascending young tight end, capable, not special, but capable running backs. And again, the old line's not as bad as everybody says it is if you look at PFF in the rankings. So no more complaining, no more whining. You'll find out if Justin Fields can play. And if he can't, and my guess has always been 60-40, he can. But if he can't, then the next guy's got all these draft picks, a grown-up wide receiving core, um, and whatever they get in this draft, which I imagine they'll fix a lot of their defense. It, it, listen, when you have as many picks as they have now, which is a couple of seconds, a couple of fourths, a couple of fifths, and their first, you can solve a lot of issues. Defense is about athleticism and reaction. You can be young on defense and very, very good. Generally, offense, they're going to go rebuild that old line. Apparently, they're going to go get a tackle from the Niners and spend some money. So this was I thought this was about as good as you can do in a draft class that doesn't have a star receiver. I mean, you can always trade out of the number one spot, but to get that haul with this quarterback draft class, my guess is Carolina's owner, the impatient David Tepper, uh, wanted to make a splash and wanted to figure out quarterback because he's tired of being the richest owner in the league and unwatchable. So they went, whoever they draft, C.J. Stroud uh, or Bryce Young, you know, who knows who's going to work. I think... I think Bryce Young's the more naturally gifted quarterback, small, but pretty naturally gifted. I, I said he could play in a dome or warm weather. I thought Chicago did great. And they also create clarity. I'm not saying they're going to be a great football team, but now there's no more excuses. If Daniel Jones can get into the playoffs with that O-line and that receiving core in, in a division that had three playoff teams. Okay, it's time for Justin Fields. Th these are good players. DJ Moore, to get DJ Moore, when I saw that trade, my takeaway was, they got DJ Moore in the trade? That guy gets you 1,000 yards a season with Kyle Allen and Baker Mayfield and Darnold. He's like a real player. He'll be their number one. So, and he's locked up for several years. So, you're fine there financially. 
So that's a big win for Chicago, a franchise that I have never, ever trusted upstairs. I've liked some of their coaches. Dave Wanstead did a good job. Matt Nagy got him into the playoffs. They've had coaches, Mike Ditka, but upstairs never trusted him. Really good day for the Bears. Going to create all sorts of clarity over the next 12 months. What do we got at coach? If the coach can't develop Justin Fields, maybe you got the wrong coach. If Justin Fields can't get up and down the field with that offense and those players, you got the wrong quarterback. But we'll know in a year. Because right now we're arguing the O-line, the receivers, the all it is is all muddied up. And nope, in one year, no more excuses. And that's what you need. Okay, do we got the guy or not? Now, the Chargers knew after the first year, with that offensive line, Justin Herbert lit it up. We got the guy. Then they had to fire the coach. In this league, you're looking for clarity. Because you got to have the right coach and the right quarterback to win Super Bowls. We're going to know both real soon for the Bears. Okay. So the Rams traded away uh, Jalen Ramsey and didn't get much for him. Uh, this is not the NBA, right? Like Jalen Ramsey's really expensive and has got two more really expensive years. And he's coming off uh, not his best year. And the Rams are like, yeah, we're going to move him for a third round pick. I thought they'd get a second and a starter. They got a third and a backup backup to a backup tight end. Um, but my takeaway is this. What have the Rams done in the last couple of weeks? They've gotten rid of Jalen Ramsey, Bobby Wagner, and, and, and Leonard Floyd, three defensive players. Why? Because Sean, Mc, Sean McVay runs the show. And Sean McVay has leverage. And he has threatened retirement for two years. And the first year, what did he get out of that threat? A big new contract. This year, what did he get out of that threat? Control of personnel. I was told, I said it on this show multiple times a month ago, McVeigh was going to move off defensive pieces. They were going to spend a year getting much better offensive personnel. So you know Sean McVeigh sitting there thinking, timeout. Mike McDaniel in Miami, he's got a loaded offense. Jalen Waddell, Gasecki, Tyreek Hill. He's looking at Kyle Shanahan, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, Jennings, Debo Samuel, Brendan Ayuk. He's looking at Zach Taylor. Got T. Higgins, got good tight ends, got Jamar Chase, got Joe Mixon. And he's sitting there thinking, timeout. Zach Taylor worked under me. How does he have better offensive personnel than I do? And Kyle Shanahan doesn't have a Super Bowl. Why's, why's he got better offensive personnel than I do? Mike McDaniel, that organization's moving heaven and earth to get him offensive pieces. And look what I got. I got, I got too much money tied up on defense. So McVay's like, we won a Super Bowl. We have the, like the 15th best defense in the league. He said, I've shown you the blueprint. We don't need to have a great defense. I won you a Super Bowl. I think they had the 15th total defense and the 17th scoring defense. It may have been flipped. It wasn't a great defense, and I won a Super Bowl. So I'm going to have now power over personnel, a big say, and we're going offense. So they accumulate now. They've got a second, a couple of thirds. They've got uh, multiple uh, six-round pick, multiple seven. They got all sorts of picks. Now, most of them aren't great picks. They still don't have a number one. But he has used leverage twice about retirement, once to get a new contract, and now to flip the organization like Miami, get offensive pieces. And so this is – and I get it. He's looking around going, timeout. How's Mike McDaniel, Zach Taylor, and Shanahan, all these brilliant offensive guys? They're stacked. I got Cooper Cup, no number two. Not sure I love my quarterback. Offensive line's a mess. I trade Cam Akers in 45 minutes. You got to get me some pieces. And so they're moving off the defensive, guys. Listen, very rarely, they got 11 draft picks now. You can win in this. In the NFL, defenses tends to be about speed and athleticism. You can load up. If you, you don't have to have pro bowlers everywhere. I mean, the Jets defense has a lot of kids. It's really good. You don't need to have veterans. But offense is choreography. You don't want a terribly young offensive line. Uh, so I, they're going to spend. They move off Jalen Ramsey. It's a, it's a cash dump. And I, my guess is they're going to use any cash savings and go buy somebody in free agency on the offensive side. So, um, you know, Sean McVay always had power with the Rams, but he's used this retirement for a contract and bigger personnel push on offense. We've been talking about it for the last month, and that's what you got with Jalen Ramsey. Uh, I don't know if you – everybody loves what the Dolphins had. The, you know, everybody this morning is freaking out about the Dolphins, but do you really need two great corners? I don't know if you do. Uh, Jalen Ramsey's really expensive, didn't have a great year. And I'll say this, outside of, 
there are certain players in this league that are that are core pieces. It's and I would say like Aaron Donald Cooper Cup. Jalen Ramsey's talented. He was talented at Florida State. He was talented at Jacksonville. He's talented with the Rams and now the Dolphins. He's not necessarily a guy I'm going to build around. We talk about this all the time. You know, Derek Jeter, you build around. Tom Brady, you build around. There's guys you build around. Then then there's guys that are just really, really talented. Jalen Ramsey's really, really talented. OBJ is really, really talented. They're not going to be core pieces that I'm going to build around long term. And the Rams knew that. Outside of Aaron Donald, they're going to go young on defense. They're going to go young on defense, going to spend for – they're going to do the opposite of the Steelers. They're going to put some money on offense and get young on defense. So we'll see how it works out. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.